Go for it. So now we're recording. Okay, now we can crack our beers. You cracked them too soon. My bad. Ooh, yeah. There it is. I already cracked mine because Vasily did it. <laughs> That's okay. That's good. I guess we can finally cheers that you've turned uh, legal age to drink. 19 years old. Happy birthday, Antoine. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like it tastes okay, but like man, I've been on a bender the past three days. Like you should last be night right away. Away. Well, I mean, what else do you? have been in, I've been in quarantine for like this is coming up on the third month. You know, I haven't seen other people in like three fucking months. You gotta go on those hard benders. <laughs> Dude, I've been in quarantine just as long, and I haven't gone on a bender. You're legal age. It's different. I'm 19. You're like 30. 31. Close enough. I actually, I actually went up. Like I didn't even like say no. I'm like younger than that. No, I, I'm. Mm-hmm. I don't mind the the age number. Well, 30 isn't a bad. I've number. never bought. I've never minded. No, 30 is a great number. 30 is like really, really good. 30 is like the last ditch effort right now mm-hmm. to really clear up any mistakes before 40 because by mm-hmm. the time i'm 40 or by the time anyone's 40 they should have a general idea of how things operate general so, idea like <laughs> shut up general <laughs> idea uh, there it is um so 20 like where you're just at 19 so once you hit 20 because 19 no one takes you seriously 20 people start taking you more seriously, especially 21, because you're legal everywhere, okay? So then it's going to be like the, it's the what are you going to do with your life phase, and you're starting to piece things together. Then what happens is you get to um, about 26, 27, and you start realizing you're getting closer to 30, and now it starts setting in in your mind what you're going to do, and usually 25 to 30 is a really, at least for me, it was a really shitty time because I didn't know what the hell was going on. But then 30 hit, and I'm like, settled in. And Vass, you're going to see this next week, because Vass, you turn 30 on Wednesday next week. So we'll have Anthony's birthday episode this week and your birthday episode next week. Anyways, and then you hit 30. And so far, what I've been finding for myself and other people who are now in their mid-30s is that they're just enjoying the time like they've made some mistakes when they were in their 20s they're making less mistakes now some of them not everybody and then they're now being able to figure their shit out and with that i say hello everybody oh sorry i was just gonna start the episode (laughs) well one last thing. hello everybody welcome to another episode of the f word no no no, go for it go for it (laughs) it's okay for context wise, again, very hard to understand when someone's cutting off a point via video call, unlike the actual podcast. But to add on to your point, uh, you're talking about like the age difference or like 30 ish and lots of people getting their life together. And like one of those things I don't really or I never really thought about was that fact that Ted Mosby and How I Met Your Mother and their whole friend group was your age. Like they're 30. Mm-hmm. They're not my, they're not 19. Mm-hmm. They're not like 21. They're like 30 year old adults. So this is true. Oh yeah, and now when what you do is you watch. That's okay. I don't. I don't mind. But let's start again. So, hello everybody. Welcome. (laughs) Third attempt uh, uh, to the F Word podcast. As you've probably heard, we're talking age because it's Anthony's birthday. Well, it was two days ago or yesterday. So, but we are celebrating it now. Unfortunately, we can't celebrate it like we wanted to face to face in the studio having some beers. However, I went out and got some beers. I did some drop offs, so everybody does have some beers, and. with me is Vass and, of course, our happy birthday boy, Anthony. It's your birthday boy. <laughs> I don't know how to make this rhyme. Anthony is such a hard name to rhyme. It's your birthday boy you with the joy. Anthony doesn't even rhyme with joy. It's, no. uh, I'll get to it. I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> okay. Best of luck. Uh, Vass, how's it going? Oh, it's going. Can't complain. Oh, it's going indeed. Oh, um, don't get too into yes. your life there, Vass. Jeez. <laughs> yeah but as you heard before we're kind of talking about like age stuff because it's his birthday and he's turning 19 and it is a milestone birthday and vast is turning 30 next week i'm only one year into 30 and uh 30 is pretty interesting so far but i guess it depends on where you're at overall but you know 
when you get to I know the people that are in their forties right now, like they've got things relatively on lock. If things haven't mm-hmm. fallen apart, then they've they've better they've been able to better equip themselves to uh to handle the forties and then prepping mentally for the fifties and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, I, I don't I don't believe the age is just a number thing in mm-hmm every respect i think yes age can just be just a number depending on how you feel and blah 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 because i know some days i'm you know especially in my 20s when I was, my back was really shitty i felt like i was 80 and i'm like oh i'm 27 years old and i can walk like an 80 year old perfect but anthony you're gonna find that once you get past the whole drinking thing because it's a phase and then mm-hmm. you'll go past it into the what am i going to do with my life phase but then you'll hit those you know, phases. Vass, what about you? About to hit 30. Yeah. It's all coming together. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, it, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> Your point will probably be much more no, I was going to say to I'm... Anthony's point where, yeah. is there really that much lag? There isn't lag. I just no, feel no, like no, no. We're it's just harder waiting. to gauge. <laughs> We're just giving it a little bit extra oh, wait time. So I'm like, I don't hear any lag on your guy this side. No, okay. man. It's it's no. So to Anthony's point, I'll just jump off because go for yeah, it. I'll just jump off to Anthony's point or go back to Anthony's point. Watch a bunch of stuff you used to watch as a kid now, and that'll be a trip. So oh, I have when been. I Regular first show, watched. I've been on a fucking bender. Still amazing. It's called right, but you look show. at it differently. Uh, regular show, yeah, it's on Cartoon Network. It was like the last great cartoon. It was with Adventure Time, like those are the oh. two kings. Mm-hmm. And yeah, no, those cartoons. Like I've been rewatching it just as I was like playing a mobile game, and it's just such a good fucking show. Like all because it's such an adult like show. Like they have so many adult jokes and just adult themes and shit that I just didn't get. And I'm like, oh my god, this show is a. Uh, pretty fucked up and even actually funny mark hamill plays one of the characters like one of the main characters in that show and i didn't know mm-hmm. that for the longest time mm-hmm. yeah but back yeah to no you, i G, um when i watch well I, well I was gonna say like when you mentioned how i met your mother like now that i see it it's like oh i'm in their 30s now my 30s were very different than theirs but what movie is a trip is fight club so fight club the main character is in his 30s and when i first watched that movie i was like 15 years old so i've watched it almost every year i would say almost every year since the first time i watched it and every single time like there was a big chunk of it where it's like oh this is cool this is fight club then i watched it when i was 30 i'm like this is a fucking trip right now and there's like it's it's actually so crazy and it's so different and then not only like the disney shows that you find are a lot dirtier than they were but Mm -hmm. in general everything is looked at differently Mm -hmm. you start siding with characters that you didn't side with before because let's say your your youngster rebellious nature is waning a little bit and you're now starting to understand the concept of perspective like it took me a long time to understand that one and now i'm looking at stuff i'm like huh maybe the principle from recess was okay was right maybe like you know the the way that these things are broken up and i'm looking at i was wrong all along and you know as a kid most of it is wrong but anyways that's my stuff um Anthony, since it's your birthday weekend, and Vast, this is going to be a, a little highlight for you next week. Okay. How do you want this show to go, my friend? Well, I, I we had uh, that topic. We had a couple ones. A, talking about uh, like our favorite shows and why they're our favorite and the actual meaning, not just because like, I really like it or it's funny or the actual if you can think of it because i know a lot of people don't think about why they like the shows they like but i have a lot right uh and then we had that one if we have time for that like response to casual moviegoers uh most influential but that could be another topic because that's gonna be a really big one the most influential movie in the past two decades i think it was yeah so um yeah for that one if you guys head over to at casual moviegoer uh, on instagram uh, he's a really good friend of the show, really good dude, very good reviewer. He had posted a thing with um, on YOLO underscore movies underscore blog, and it was what is the most influential movie of the last 20 years? And it was between Iron Man, so 2008's Iron Man, and 2019's Parasite. So on YOLO chose Iron Man, and then Casual chose Parasite. Mm-hmm. And so 
those were his two and that's kind of that's the that's why that topic kind of brought up because we were both talking about it and then I actually commented on it. Usually I don't like to comment too much because, you know, like got to be careful how you word things because somebody could take it the wrong way. And I don't like getting into those things, but uh, I yeah. thought it was a really good topic nonetheless. Um, okay. So we've got favorite shows and why, and we've got that topic. Two things first, Space Jam has a new title. It's called A New Legacy. Mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer dropped. And I've got a video that I'm putting together. And uh, actually, one of the guys from the Viking show is the voice of it. Like one of the male uh, protagonist voice. Oh, okay. And uh, yes, I could find it for you. Anthony, did you see the Valhalla trailer? I did not, but I was like looking through it and I was seeing some stills and shit. And actually looks really interesting. But I'm surprised because you said that you weren't excited for it or something. Are you doing that? Do you care for it? And didn't you say you like you wanted okay. one like this? So a couple things. So Magnus Brunn is the guy. Um, I think he mm-hmm. might be from Game of Thrones. No, is an actor known for Gaelden, Land of Mine. I guess he was in a Viking show. Last Kingdom, that's where he's from. Recently, uh, most okay, recently. I've not seen that one. Yeah, but he looks like he fits the role. So my thing with the Assassin's Creed franchise is um, they've... What I think Assassin's Creed is and what they've been producing are very different. So now I've spent all day, okay, and I did a little mini thought review video piece um, last night that I'm going to finish up to release tonight on it, okay? But a lot of it comes down to what I think Assassin's Creed should be as a as a hardcore fan, and I know that other hardcore fans equally or maybe even more big into the franchise than me feel oppositely than I do. So I'm I'm very cautious about it. There are some good things that I'm seeing. It looks like it's going to be, again, a really, really fun game. And it actually looks like it's going to be very much like Assassin's Creed Black Flag was. And even when I'm thinking about some of the story elements and stuff, minus the ship battles, where it's going to be a really fun-ass game, but going to have very, very little to do with the actual Assassin's Creed like brand or the the lore or anything like that Mm -hmm. so that's that was my concerns i guess about Mm -hmm. it but i've 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 watched the trailer like 12 times i've spent all day having like um people talking about it so but i and and i'm getting excited legitimately actually the more i'm getting i'm getting more excited than i was last night when i even recorded the the thoughts review but i'm still going to put it up as is because i want to Mm-hmm. Not fair enough. So, anyways, Bass, Bass, really quick. What are your thoughts on it? Oh, I'm super excited for it. Again, I, I understand where you're coming from about the lore behind Assassin's Creed. What actually makes it an Assassin's Creed uh, s game and why it deserves that title instead of just being called like Viking Warrior or some shit like that. So, um, I mean, we get a little tidbit hidden blade right away that gives it you know, makes it the assassin, but the lore is yet to be determined. So I'm interested to find out how they tie it all in. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Anthony, have you ever played any of the Assassin's Creeds? I've tried. I've just like as dumb as it it's sounds. Not your bag. I uh, get annoyed when I can't kill random civilians. <laughs> so I don't know. I just feel like it's oh. too it's in Grand Theft Auto, man. <laughs> well exactly. That's why I like Grand Theft Auto so much. <laughs> Jeez. It's more fun if you so I have a hidden pissed. blade. If, you, if I can jump through a hair, like, don't you want to be able to run th- around the city just assassinating? Like, you're an assassin, you're not a good person, you're assassinating random people. That's just what I wanted, and it just wasn't that way. <laughs> These people have morals, Anthony. Okay, yeah, well, I a don't credo. do a video game. My creed is if you're There's on the credo. streets, get ready to die at my feet to be there beat. You go, rhymes. You know what's really funny about what you said? They're, one of the elements in it, uh, so they're they're making an effort on bringing back the settlement aspect. So before in the other games, some of the other yeah. games, the last one was Assassin's Creed Unity, where you actually had like a home base. In this home base, you can actually do like Viking style rap battles, they call them, which mm-hmm. I think is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Because I guess back then they used to have like bouts of, I forget what the name was that they used, but you could just pretty much rap battles, like bashing the other person in a very clever way, but obviously not in the sense that we know of, but it's just a good way to, it's just a uh, more 
fun way to call them what they are, and it is what a rap battle is. It's just bashing the other person cleverly. They should have Eminem uh, be one of the guys who mediates those rap battles. Yeah. You know what's funny? So not about the uh, Eminem part, but I will say this. You can dual wield any combination of weapons, mm-hmm. and also you can have a wolf as a um, as a mount. Mm-hmm. But the funny part is that you can dual wield shields. Yeah. So I put out a tweet. I put out a tweet, and it was the Infinity War trailer where it was Cap and Hulk and everybody running because you could do raid- raids with all your Viking pals, right? So I'm like mm-hmm. picturing myself dual wielding shields and running in to do raids with like my whole crew, very much like that ending of the trailer where they were all running in Wakanda. <laughs> so I'm, look- I'm looking forward to doing that shit. But they they lose at the end. And then um, I didn't have any. I guess so, but Mm -hmm. I might not lose, Anthony. Well, that's what they Um, thought too. Okay, Anthony, where do you want to start? Uh, I guess the show is probably the quickest one and easiest one to get out of the way. Show you like and okay, whatever you want, man. Okay. Do you, you want to like Bill? You, you sound like Bill from Brooklyn Nine Nine. I can start with like whatever you want, man. It's your money. Ah, uh, you gotta stop saying that. Bill makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> whatever you want, man. It's your money. <laughs> Oh, did you guys finish the newest season? I just started. Yeah. I was halfway through the episode, uh, and then I'm going to record. Like, I was I was re-watching the entire series, and I just decided to go all the way through just to watch it again, because I don't remember a lot of season smart. six. But season six is actually much better than I thought. I don't. I did not remember the last half of it. But mm. the show, I like, my, one of my favorite shows, I love How I Met Your Mother with a passion, but my favorite show is Dragon Ball. And I used yep. to fucking hate Dragon Ball. Like, in grade eight's, I never really liked anime, and I still, I'm not a huge anime fan, it's just very, like, I think two or three I really like and watch consistently, but I used to hate Dragon Ball, I just thought it was stupid, people are yelling all the time, getting long hair, it didn't make sense to me, but in grade nine, I was forced to work out by my brother at my school gym for the football team, and it's not a bad thing I was being forced to work out, but, like, he threatened to beat my ass if I didn't work out properly and, like, didn't spot him correctly, Uh, so I was forced to work out. And around grade 10 is when I started watching Dragon Ball. And I started working out where I could bench press barely the bar, squat barely the bar. Like, I get, my, my, like my strength was literally at zero. If this was a game, my stats were zero, zero, zero across the fucking bar. I could not do anything. Uh, so I started watching Dragon Ball in grade 10. And as I was doing that, I was still working out consistently. And it's just one of those shows that made me more motivated to work out because that's like the whole basis of the show is working out and getting stronger. And just, it'd be those times where I'd be in the gym and my friend Ethan hated this because we would be in the gym by ourselves. And in Dragon Ball, uh, one of the ways to power up is by yelling Kaioken. It's like a form or a technique. So I'd be doing <laughs> bench press and I just breathe in deeply and then yell Kaioken and just start fucking repping out all this bench. And he'd just stare at me like the biggest fucking idiot in the world. But it's just one of those things where I love the story. I like After watching and reading it all, it's just so inspiring to me. And, like, I know a lot of other people, like, a lot of people that do UFC love Dragon Ball. A lot of people at Box love Dragon Ball. Just one of those things where, in that mindset of wanting to better yourself, just watching them inspired you with their hype-ass fucking fight scenes. Well, what's cool about Dragon Ball um, is that it was never about him beating the shit out of people just for beating them up. It Mm -hmm. was always about him bettering himself. Mm Mm-hmm. Which makes like sense. one line is he's like he says I'm not a hero for justice I just want to like get stronger and fight strong people like he's yeah uh, Goku isn't a hero like Superman like he doesn't care about beating up bad people he like if he meets someone strong like if he met uh fucking Thanos his first thing would be okay let's fight I want to see how strong you are he met the fucking god of destruction and said let me fight you right away he does not give a fuck yeah which is pretty good Vast do you ever watch Dragon Ball I don't remember uh, you never... watching it when we were kids. No, I never fully got into it. Um, I think it was playing around the same time we were growing up, but there was a lot of shows like Pokemon was still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Indigo. Got a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh, some Digimon for that kind of anime stuff. Reboot. Uh, reboot. So good. Actually, I had a reboot moment because uh, my IT guy was helping me with my computer and I had to do one thing and one of them had two options and one was like decimal and the other one was hexadecimal. So then I just threw a Hail Mary and asked my IT guy, I'm like, hey, man, do you happen to know Reboot, the show? And he just kind of paused and he's like, 
why? I'm like, I don't know. It just says hexadecimal on screen. I thought I'd ask somebody because I was like really wanted to ask somebody. So now him and I are like friends because like I threw this Hail Mary pass out with hexadecimal. That's fair. totally random. And then you, the other one, Anthony is how I met your mother, right? Yeah. Uh, that one we're, is, turn, we're, we're turning into like the How I Met Your Mother show, but you know, whatever. We are, but you know, it's fine. That's the show that people need to care about. How I Met Your Mother, I also used to hate. I remember I watched the first episode in like grade ten, and I absolutely hated the laugh track shows. And I still do. Like, like, uh, Big Bang Theory is fucking awful for it. They just have too many laugh tracks. But just watching it and actually getting to like realize that because not a lot of comedies have storylines like that, where there's an actually like cohesive storyline where you actually end up caring about the characters. Like, by the end of the show, like I binge watch it in, like, two months. So, by the end, when I finished How I Met Your Mother for the first time, like, I was heartbroken. I felt like, holy shit. The mother died. Barney, like, divorced Rob. And, like, everything came across. Well, it was spoilers. Just well, it's been out for, you know, it's, it's finished for five years. Yeah, it's been, seen it now. it's been a while. It's been a while. Some people have yelled that on my unentertained facts. I'm like, it's been out for five Ooh. years. Like, come on. <laughs> but mm-hmm. it was just one of the show, the first show that actually made me connect with what I was watching and care about stuff like that and also relate some of the the lessons they learned to real life mm-hmm. yeah sure we're yeah. depressed yeah it gets especially especially towards the end it gets very real mm-hmm. i just uh and, and it's weird because it tried it did a thing where it's like comedy 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 and then all of a sudden just reality sets in and that, like, the whole fairy tale world that you might, that they might have lived in. Like, when Marshall was at the booth and he turns around to those other kids, that kind of remind him. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, just, just remember this time. And uh, somewhere, something to that effect. And, you know, it's, it's also in the office when Andy Bernard's like, I wish you knew when the good times were happening. You I know, wish we knew we were, always... were in the good, I wish we knew we were in the good old days. Yeah. When we were in them. Exactly. Them. Yeah. Yeah. And like that's a those are those are real things. Now for yourself, when I bet you like a quote like that or moments like in how I met your mother, when you're, you know, let's say twenty eight or turning thirty, it's gonna hit you even more. Like they hit me the most. Stuff like that hits me so hard now. Um Vass, mm-hmm. two shows and why you love them whether they've affected you personally or you just love them for the fact of loving them whatever you got go uh okay i'm gonna start with the old school one that really hits home grew up with is boy meets world oh damn it, it's, in, it's in it's in the title that. uh you know watching it when you're younger you got really into it and didn't pick up on everything right you just enjoy the story because you're you're a kid this is a kid you're growing up together basically And you go through more or less the same scenarios. You know, you have a sibling, you're dealing with that shit. You have a good friend. uh, You get little ups and downs with that kind of stuff, bullying, uh, all that kind of stuff. And just it's a it's a boy's life. It's literally what we all go through. So it definitely hits home. You have those mentors in there. You get those life lessons. um, And then you get those moments where you you do the right thing, too. So the, the show really kind of covered everything. Watching when you're older, yes, it's a little cheesy. I still laugh quite hard at the, the dumbest things, but it's, it's just so subtle, such a funny little quip. And, and maybe I pick it up more as an adult than I did as a kid. Um, so I, I really like Boy Meets World. I'll rewatch it a few times over. Um, and so I enjoy that, um, that one quite a bit. Um, and then my second one is Lost obviously Mm. (laughs) Mm. um and it might not seem relatable but at the same token it's just essentially these people were put in a really shitty situation and not knowing that it actually was where they were supposed to be and it actually made them their better selves so even if you're in like it kind of made you feel like you might be in a city situation you might have to make these really tough choices but it might be exactly where you need to go and you know, in the show, they do break away from that. They leave the island or where they're supposed to be, and it's never the same. They lose that part of themselves that they they gained being on the island and adjusting to that life, and so they end up going back. So it kind of attests to, like, you know, maybe the grass isn't always greener on the other side. You know, you should be where you're supposed to be and kind of grind through, and eventually you'll get to the end. And so um, that's where those two shows kind of hit home and, you know, you can kind of relate to it. You can pull some pieces. Obviously, the 
you gotta look, dig a little bit deeper and lost but you know the relationships are there the the tasks they have to deal with are there so it can be very relatable that way also you never well, know it's when the idea you're gonna be stranded that... on an island <laughs> yeah exactly that's true. maybe your own little island your mm. mental island and we'll call the your island mental... puzzles <laughs> yes and that's the puzzle there we go and that's because you want to buy a bar yes. dude we should buy a bar that's all i'm saying no, we should not buy a bar. We called it puzzle. Um, we could get so much business off of how much your mother pounds. Or just me. Either way. <laughs> well then. <laughs> we probably could. Actually, we'd probably be like it'd be puzzles and you would just call it like and just have like weekly how I met your mother trivia. Exactly. That's what would that's what would be the combination of stuff, right? Um, to your points, to both Vass's shows, uh yeah, Boy Meets World was a good one, especially like Sean with his like issues later on, especially when he joined that cult, and then you oh, had yeah. Corey's dad go in and help him like that. I still mm-hmm. remember that to this day, like it was yesterday. I don't know yeah, what it was about that. Episode, they join a cult? It, was, it was crazy. Oh, yeah, man. He, that Sean, Sean, one of the main characters, he's trying to. There's a lot he, of he was trying to find he, it, wasn't really a cult, cult. Yeah, a lot it of was, it was a cult. And then the other one, <laughs> yeah, it, it was a cult, but the other one was, um the episode where Corey was upset at the fact that his dad looked at him not as a sports guy. And then Eric was having trouble connecting with his dad outside of the sports. And then at the end there, when they went to the museum, it was Eric pointing out, like literally nailing the description of this abstract sculpture. Yeah. And both of them kind of looking at him like, huh? And it's always like, that one I will always remember till the till the day I die because like it's it's like uh, well it reminds me a lot of you and me like uh-huh. Bass not Anthony sorry buddy oh. but like <laughs> I'm like especially to like our dad we're we we help service certain things like you're the handy guy you're the guy that can fix things when when needed and like I take care of let's say the stuff that Corey would have taken care of like the the Ooh. other side of stuff and it's like you still try to fit both of those molds and sometimes you don't but Uh you know it's it's not for me what i've learned over the years is that it's not worth trying to uh fight who you are Mm -hmm. it's just making who you are better overall and being okay with that which is another thing with lost is that you know they all had to it's not that they even had to redefine themselves because a lot of the times on there, like, oh, we're on an island. We can, you know, redefine who we actually are. We don't have to be the same people. Yeah. But a lot of it is like taking the parts that are actually you without the distractions and mm-hmm. enhancing those. Yeah. And what's funny, you mentioned Lost, is that I'm rewatching it right now. And the fucking hatch, yep. finding the hatch, the light popping out of the hatch after Locke like has his breakdown mm-hmm. and finding the black rock still give me chills no, i might watch lot i might watch lost i tried yeah didn't really get into it but another is least... really interesting at yeah. least get to season four and then oh if you God. want such a stop. that's like halfway isn't it isn't there nine seasons <laughs> i don't know it's six seasons it's actually that's over it, halfway it, it, no it is but i mean i would say just get to like if you really want to get to yeah. season four see how you feel and then go but you have to get through seasons yeah. one to three like especially right, season one there seasons one or sorry season one i would say is still one of the best seasons oh. of tv ever mm-hmm. like as as a whole entire season it is unbelievable that first yeah. pilot episode is still the one of the most expensive pilot episode and still one of the best pilot episodes ever. Like yeah. it is wild. Like oh, yeah. it is sure and, it, and it's got it, it went as far as for GTA to have the hatch in GTA five. Like mm. if you go in, in the water, one of the Easter eggs is the the hatch from Lost in the water. Oh, and wow. it is one of my favorite Easter eggs ever. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. One more point before we move to UG. Um, yeah. With Lost, like these people lived separate lives as far as anyone knew. But as you keep progressively keep watching, uh, they were always like within a, like one degree of separation. Someone knew someone somehow. Their their lives were intertwined long before they even got to where they were in, on the island. 
and discovering all those connections is just weird. And, and you do that on a day to day basis, like, Oh, you know, so-and-so and that kind of stuff. So you make that connection with someone and, you know, we live in a smaller city, so it's even easier. Um, but these, a lot of these people lived halfway across the world and, and those connections just made it more, uh, more interesting that like you know you have no idea how you know this person kind of thing so that's always a trip because then that's happened a lot like the one guy i was working with in calgary okay we went to the same school and we graduated within a year of each other and we worked together with three months for three months until realizing we were at the same high school at the same time and we ended up living in at a different city and ended up working at the same restaurant (laughs) like and that's happened to me a couple of times and it is insane. Oh yeah, it is so insane when you encounter something like that. And it's like the the whole the, it's cheesy, but yeah, like it's a small world. It's really not because it's so big, but it's so crazy how one little ripple effect. I mean, I guess we're kind of seeing that with the virus, one person affects forty people. So in a way, in a nicer way, the analogy plays out where one person can have a lasting impression on, you know. 40 people and then those people infect quote unquote another 40 yeah but you know in a good way not in the impending doom way before we went g one last thing i just want to just notice this too on lost i had no real i had no idea the fat guy was the blitz oh yeah (sighs) oh there's so many says the numbers yeah man those numbers he says in there, 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42, those are super important numbers. When you watch Lost, you'll get it. Oh. It's so good. Okay. Yeah, it's it's really good. I will, I, I'm going to check out Lost. Okay, G, your list. Um, well, it's two of them really quickly. I've mentioned them a bunch of times. Um, I would say Breaking Bad. And mine are for different reasons than you guys. Like, you guys actually have much deeper things. But I would say Seinfeld is one and Breaking Bad. Uh, Seinfeld, because I just loved it so much. And because there have been very few moments in my life. Because most of my major, major memories are around movies, not so much TV shows. Mm -hmm. But I have gone through my life and met with so many people and connected with so many people on the basis of quoting Seinfeld alone. It's been like this weird decoder. It's been like this weird password or cheat code to a lot of my relationships where I can mention or reference Seinfeld with some people and they'll just know, you know exactly where it's from. And it's connected me like across generations. You know, a lot of my friends who are now in their 40s are because let's say we would spend hours quoting Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. So just the power of quoting that show. And I love it just because I still think it's hilarious. I still think it's super relevant on, and so many fronts, but just how many people it's brought into my circle just blows me away. Like I'm, 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 when I think about it, it, it amazes me how many are like that how many friendships I have that are like that. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is Breaking Bad because of just how fucking good it is. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with that show. (laughs) Like I I just start to finish. I love it. Mostly because I I really love shows that are able to take you on um, a journey of a person. Like I don't care for large scale stuff. Like Game of Thrones was cool the large scale world and dragons and all that stuff was really cool but i mean what made that special is really the small intimate moments like the time it took to go from i don't know uh winterfell to um the wall, the wall and the conversations in between that were more meaningful than actually seeing the wall and actually seeing winterfell mm-hmm. and so but i'm i just recently finished it again for probably the fifth time and when it's done, I'm still sitting there like, how the hell did we get here? And I'm obsessed with stuff like that. Like, where was the defining moment that changed a character like Walter White? And then seeing the switch off of where Jesse was kind of the low life to where he became kind of our hero of sorts and how Walt became what he became, literally becoming a monster. Mm-hmm. And at at what triggered that moment? Like right now, lately, I've been obsessed with that idea 
And I know it like it drives Soph nuts because Soph and I will get into an argument and I'll be sitting there going as deep and far as possible and referencing things from like years ago on building a case for it. And she's just like, I just did this one thing because I did it. So anyways, those are my two for sure. Mostly, and, and again, Breaking Bad because it's an amazing show. But mm-hmm. yeah, Seinfeld, it's connected me with so many people. It's wild. So I those are my Seinfeld. two. I haven't seen Seinfeld, but I keep watching these clips on Instagram of uh, certain moments. <laughs> and I have, I have nothing against Seinfeld. It's not, I haven't watched it. Like, I haven't watched it. There's no reason why I haven't watched it. But it's just, uh, I guess there's no way I can watch it, except on TV and on episodes. But every moment I've seen, I've always laughed at. And just thinking about how stupidly funny it is and how it's just kind of like, it fits in with The Office, How I Met Your Mother. I don't know about story-wise. I don't think there is much of a story to it. But just the comedy and just the characters. Yeah, no, my history teacher, he told me a lesson about it. And it's kind of funny. Yeah. He, uh, he, Because his history teacher always asks questions to the class mm-hmm. that didn't have an obvious answer. Like, how can you tell if the economy is doing poorly? We'd guess. He wouldn't get the answer. He'd think about a mall. We'd keep guessing. Uh, someone said clothing store. Wrong. His answer, a male clothing store. <laughs> but uh, for the his Seinfeld reference is, is some kind of like, it's something about war. He's like, what does Seinfeld and like war have something in common with? And like, I don't know. And he explains the whole finale of Seinfeld, how they're eating mac and cheese or talking about mac and cheese in prison. Mm-hmm. He said, because Seinfeld is pointless just like mm-hmm. war i'm like that is such a stupid way but it's like it worked i'm like oh, i remember it so it worked but i'm like that is such a stupid way it took him like 15 minutes to get that analogy out but yeah that means that it's not a very good analogy no offense to your history teacher i don't think it's a it's what's funny is that it is dubbed the show about nothing yeah. but when you watch seinfeld it will you will notice that every show after it so from friends and after you mm-hmm. will realize that it was like the pioneer. It's like the Reservoir Dog slash Pulp Fiction of movies. Mm, I haven't seen like either every. Of those. Yeah, you. Really, I want really, to though. Really need to. <laughs> um, but every single movie after that, like those are defining moments in in television or movie history. When you watch Seinfeld, you're going to be like, "Oh, How I Met Your Mother totally ripped off a lot of this stuff." Like Seinfeld it ripped off the concept. Off How I Met Your Mother. Hmm. this it's impossible because seinfeld was first oh sure yeah seinfeld was very much first it actually story yeah well you know just just look up the time of when one came out and the other one ended and the other one came out because how i met your mother came out because they needed another friend show and so they they went at it with how i met your mother because friends was gone but then when you look at a lot of the concepts that how i met your mother has it's like concepts like the close talker in you know, uh, yeah. things like what you're, you can't stare at cleavage, uh, you know, things like that. Like a lot of rules of society were embedded mm-hmm. in yeah. Seinfeld that were used later on. So yeah. when you watch, right. if you do get a chance to watch Seinfeld, it'll blow your mind and you're like, wow, this show has been so influential to so much television and the concept around it. And, the, and what they what they were saying and everything and George Costanza and Kramer are some of the best characters ever but even Elaine Bennis is just mm-hmm. she has such amazing moments and of course Jerry Seinfeld like I would say Jerry is like the weakest character but he's also the creator with Larry David yeah mm-hmm. so it's kind of like you're just following Jerry at, through this thing and then his friends come in and add all the flavor yeah mm-hmm. that's and there's nothing wrong with that like sometimes nothing. that happens yeah. Yeah. yeah you might be the stagnant one in the group that's like more or less kind of you know and you have your moments just like jerry had his moments but you have these characters in your life that are just like what do you do <laughs> oh and <laughs> they're, like, they're hilarious oh yeah it's good yeah well they're, well they're hilarious on the outside like if someone were to look at it on the outside they'd be like oh wow that kramer guy is really funny but then if you were jerry you'd be like yeah he's a good guy but he's a bit much sometimes yeah Exactly. You know, or, or like Costanza, who's always down in the dumps and everything never goes right. Like, it's so, it's such a brilliant show. And mm-hmm. also, the fact that they took one episode that's only in a Chinese restaurant and make it one of the funniest episodes of TV I still to this day have ever seen. Yeah, not even actually beyond sitting. me. It's actually waiting to sit. <laughs> In, yeah, it is one. It is in the, the lobby of this Chinese yeah. restaurant. Yeah. And it is so funny. It's crazy. I, I cannot like I cannot stress how good it is. Hell, ask Nick. Like Nick will go on a tear on how amazing the show is. 
and Nick see nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that will really tell you it sticks with him. But uh, it's Seinfeld is coming to Netflix, I think, next year as part Amazing. of the deal. So get ready to binge that. Well, I have the DVDs for the first five seasons, and so yeah. I haven't started them yet, though. Mm-hmm. Or I've started some of them, but I haven't gone through the whole thing because I'm watching like The Last Dance, which is funny that the Space Jam news came out because I've been watching the Michael Jordan biography or like the last season of like the classic Bulls, mm-hmm. which is unreal. Wait, so you're watching the la- oh the last oh with Michael Jordan. Yeah, it's called The Last Dance because um, Phil Jackson named every season. Like, he had a theme behind every season. So okay. that one was The Last Dance. So I totally it's, thought it's you said good. save The Last Dance. I'm like, oh, yeah, with Julius Oh, Style. dude, <laughs> that show is fire, okay? I don't oh, yeah. care what anybody says. That show is straight fire. Not only that show, uh, 10 Things I Hate About You, fire. Oh, yes. Unbelievable shows, both of them. Uh, well, I guess that takes us actually to 40 minutes. Anthony, did you still want to go on that other the other topic or save that one for next week? We could save that for next week because we can actually get okay. more of an idea because we have two decades yeah. of films to cover. All right. That's true. Yeah, we do. I actually went three decades for some reason because I forgot. Like, I just put the whole, like, 2020. Like, I put 2000 to 2020 in, like, one decade. I'm like, wait a minute. Oh. That's stupid. This is, like, three decades we got to work with. But, yeah, it makes more sense now. Mm-hmm um anything else anthony for your birthday episode no just next time we're together i will be off the water you'll be off the water or off the sauce off the water because during the recordings i'm always the one drinking water as you guys have Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah beverages so from now on you're just gonna be hung over as fuck every time or just drunk as fuck yes (laughs) yes all right well uh, once again, Anthony, happy birthday, buddy. Uh, sorry we couldn't have drinks face-to-face on your birthday weekend episode. I was actually super, like, really, really looking forward to, to that episode face-to-face, but uh, mm-hmm. at least we'll have it soon, and at least I was able to bring you some booze, even nice. though you don't like beer that much. Oh, um, free booze is free booze. I guess, yeah. You'll learn that very quickly. That's a very important commodity. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's all I got. That's all we got. Thank you so much for tuning in. I put out, finally, two reviews. One of Money Heist, just really a kind of like a thoughts thing on, even though I said in the review, or in the video it's a review, and Extraction. Um, Extraction, everybody should see. I thought it was super badass. Bass, you saw it and you liked it too, right? Oh, yeah, it was great. Was it actually yeah. a good movie or just a good action movie? Good I thought action. it was both. Yeah, yeah. 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 I thought it was like a, it, it's like a good seven out of ten, and then the action elevates it to like an eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially for a first time director, it's not as good as John Wick. No, but, but Chris Hemsworth has got a career in the action world. I think he's oh, yeah. yeah, he I think he is like and not not Marvel like outside of Marvel. I'm talking like Keanu Reeves level action he mm-hmm. could do going forward. Um, so I got those reviews. Check those out on our YouTube channel. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at the F words G. You can email us at the F podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following the F word podcast on Facebook and Instagram, the lazy Canadian on Instagram as well. And I'll be dropping a Assassin's Creed Valhalla thoughts slash review slash whatever video pretty soon as well. So until next time, I'm G. I'm Anthony. <laughs> and I'm fast. That's all well, you got. I don't Anthony. do I don't do a rhyme and you laugh still. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> and we're out. Thank you.